Hi, welcome back to the PhotoshopTrainingChannel.com. I'm Jesus Ramirez. In this video, I'm going to show you how to match specific colors to anything in Photoshop. We're going to use a technique that you probably haven't seen before. I was sitting around thinking about blending modes and how they work. Then I realized that you could use them to color match. And that's what I'm going to show you in this tutorial. I'm going to show you two different examples. In the first example, we're going to just look at two simple squares and I'm going to show you the principles and you're going to see how we're going to match those two squares. Then we're going to move into a more complicated image so that you can see what happens with an actual photo and the different problems that you can run into and how you can solve those problems. And before we get started, I just want to ask you to please click on that like button if you find the technique useful. Also, if this is your first time at the Photoshop training channel, then don't forget to click on that subscribe and notification buttons. Okay, let's get started. This is the file that we're going to start with. This is going to be the simple example where we're going to take a look at the technique. Then we'll move into a more complicated example so you can see it in practice with an actual photo. So we have three layers. We have just a simple white background, a blue box, which is going to be the color that we're trying to match onto this yellow box. You can see the labels new and original. You don't really have to name your layers this way if you don't want to, but this makes it more clear for the tutorial. Before we do anything, I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page and that we all understand how colors work in Photoshop. If you double click on the foreground color picker, the color picker comes up, of course, and we can see how the components for every color work. All the colors inside of Photoshop have three components, hue, saturation, and brightness. You can see those here. The hue is simply the color. So what color something is, you can see the H label here. So it's something blue, green, yellow, red, or any other color. What color is it? Saturation is how intense that color is. At 100%, the intensity is at its maximum. And of course, if I drag this point to the left, the intensity decreases. So that's saturation. And finally, brightness, how bright something is. Is it really bright at 100% or completely black at 0%? So we have to keep these components in mind when we color match. And the technique that I came up with, I think is both powerful and yet easy to understand for beginners. So let me show you how that works. We have the two boxes and we want to make this yellow box into a blue box. I'm going to create a new layer right above that yellow box and I'm going to fill it with the color that I want to convert it to. So I'm going to select the eyedropper tool to select that blue. That blue is now my foreground color, which means that I can fill the layer by pressing Alt and Backspace. That's Option Delete on the Mac to fill with the foreground color. Remember the components that we talked about? They're actually found in the Blending Modes dropdown. See that? Hue, Saturation, and Luminosity, also known as Brightness. So we want to make sure that these three components match onto the new layer. And one of the easiest ways of doing that is by taking advantage of the color blending mode, which applies both hue and saturation at the same time. So we already applied two of the components that make up this blue just by selecting this blending mode. Then I can clip this layer to the layer below by pressing Control Alt G. Command Option G on the Mac. And that means that this layer is only affecting the layer below. The only thing we need to worry about now is the third and final component. We already matched hue and saturation. Now we need to match brightness. To do so, I'm going to click on the original color and create a levels adjustment layer. I'm going to right click and delete the layer mask. I don't really need to do that but I'm do it so that you can see how this works. And I'm also going to name my layers. So this layer is set to luminosity and it controls the brightness. And the layer above that controls both the hue and saturation. What I'm gonna do now is match the luminosity and it's actually quite simple to do. I'm just going to click on the topmost layer and create a black and white adjustment layer to make everything black and white. So we remove the hue and saturation and we only see the brightness of the image. Then I'll select the blue layer and press V on the keyboard to select the move tool and place it right next to it so that I could have them side by side. 
so that when I adjust the levels adjustment layer, I can match these much easier. With the levels adjustment layer selected, I'm going to click on the white point and drag to the left to make it darker right about here, right when the luminosity matches, like so. Then I can disable the black and white adjustment layer and these two layers created the blue that we want to color match. Remember, readjusting the three components to get the exact color that we want. Let me show you how this works on an actual image now. Okay, now we're going to take this technique and apply it into a much more complicated scenario so that you can see how you can tackle challenges when they arise. Okay, so we have this layer, which is the color that we're going to use to apply to this dress. The first step is to duplicate this layer. So I'm going to hold Alt, Option, and a Mac and drag down. I just want a copy of that circle and we're going to fill it with the old color. I'm going to select the eyedropper tool, which allows you to click and drag and select colors. I'm not going to click on a shadow because I don't want a dark red. And I'm not going to click on a highlight because I don't want a bright red. I want more or less the actual red of the dress. Also, make sure that you have something like 5x5 five five or 11x11 11 11 average selected. This allows you to get an average of the pixels that you select. If you select 11x11, 11 11, when you click, you will not select the color of the pixel that you selected. Instead, you will select a grid that is 11 pixels by 11 pixels, and Photoshop will average those colors into a single color. So that's what I'm doing. I just want an average of the red that I click on. So the red that I'm going to click on is this one here, which is right in the center of her body, which is not a highlight and it's not a shadow. Then I'm going to click on this icon to lock the transparent pixels. You could also tap the forward slash key to enable and disable the transparency. Then I'm going to fill with the foreground color, which is the red that we selected. Alt backspace option delete on the Mac. I'm going to unlock the transparent pixels, then select the move tool and click and drag on the red circle and place it over the blue circle. What I'm going to do now is create a layer and fill it with the new color. Alt backspace, option backspace in the Mac. And I'm going to change the blending mode to color and I'm going to press Control Alt G, Command Option G on the Mac to make that into a clipping mask so that this layer only affects the layer below. And I'll call it color, which is applying, if you remember, the hue and saturation components. Now we just got to worry about the brightness of that color. So I'm going to create a black and white adjustment layer so that we can desaturate the image and see the difference in luminance values. Then above the old layer, below the color layer, I'm going to create a levels adjustment. And even though it's not necessary, I'm going to change the blending mode to luminosity. It's just a good habit. That way you know that this layer is only affecting luminosity. Again, you don't have to delete the layer mask, but I'm going to do so just to keep things more organized. And I'll call the layer brightness. And I'm going to make that layer brighter so that it matches the blue. If I disable the layer, you'll notice that the adjustment layers match the blue onto the red circle. What I'll do now is select these two layers by holding shift and clicking on them and then pressing control alt G to remove the clipping mask. And then I'll press control G command G on the Mac to put them into a group. And I'll just call this group blue because this is making that blue color that we want. And you can already see how that blue is going to look on this dress. And what I'm going to do now is simply select the dress. I'll disable these layers just so that they're not distracting. And I'll click on the quick selection tool and selecting the background layer and clicking and dragging to select the dress. I don't need a perfect selection at this point. I just want to select the dress and then I can fine tune it when I'm done. With the selection active, I'm just going to click on the blue group and I'm just going to click on the layer mask icon to create the layer mask and Photoshop applies that color onto the layer. Now you might be thinking the color is a little bright. Why is that happening? If I enable the blue circle and drag it over on top of the layer stack, then drag the circle over the dress, you'll see that we did a really good job color matching it. The problem is that the image of course has shadows and highlights. So the color can't be that bright because if it's that bright, then the color is really flat. Let me show you what I mean by that. If I double click to the side of the layer, 
I can create a gradient overlay and I have a blending mode of luminosity with this gradient going from light gray to black, which creates that effect there. If I press OK, you'll see that when you start introducing highlights and shadows, you no longer will have that same flat, bright color. And that's what happened here. What we can do to fix that is go into the brightness, which is this here, and just bring back some of the shadows. So I can double click to the side of the layer and click and drag on the underlying layer black point and drag it to the right. Hold Alt Option the Mac and click to split them in half. And that way you get a smoother transition between the visible and invisible pixels. And now you see that the color matches even better. I can drag that over here and you can see that the highlights match, the shadows match. If I disable the effects, you can see that we still have a pretty close color match. Obviously we can't have the background be as bright as this color just because in this scene, this model is in a very dark room. So obviously the color wouldn't be as bright. And by the way, if you don't know how to use the blend diff in Photoshop, no worries. I have a tutorial that covers everything you want to know about blend diff. I'll place a link right below in the description. Another thing that I want to point out is that a lot of times you might simply complete the job by creating a color layer. So fill it with the color that you want to match and set the blending mode to color, which will match the hue and saturation. And you will just use the luminosity from the original layer. Or you can adjust the brightness if you like, just to match it better. It's up to you. At this point, what you would do is simply zoom in into the image and just fix these little mistakes. You can go into the layer mask of the blue group and simply paint with white in areas where you want to reveal the effect. Remember, white reveals and black conceals. So you just got to go in there and fine tune all these little details. Obviously, I'm not going to spend the time to do that in this tutorial, but you can see that just by making that simple adjustment, the image is already looking much better. Also, if you don't know how to mask images in Photoshop or how you can fix those imperfections on the edges, I have a video on masking. I will also place a link down below in the description so that you can watch that and see how you can create smooth selections. Now, before I finish the tutorial, I just want to explain why I didn't simply use a hue and saturation adjustment layer, which will actually work. And I'm just going to take the mask from this blue layer. So I'm going to hold Alt Option on the Mac and click and drag to duplicate the layer mask onto the hue and saturation. Yes, I want to replace it. So now I have the same layer mask on both the blue group and the hue and saturation. And what this adjustment layer allows you to do is to colorize an image. And look at the controls, hue, saturation, and lightness. So I can control what color the dress is, the intensity of that color, and the brightness. And the reason that I didn't use this to start is because we already had a color in mind. We had that specific color. So I don't have to spend a lot of time fine tuning the hue and saturation to approximate this blue because I can simply use a blending mode. And all I have to worry about is the lightness otherwise known as brightness or luminosity. And of course, I use a levels adjustment layer for that. And that's how you can color match in Photoshop using blending modes. If you enjoy that technique, don't forget to click on that like button. Also, let me know in the comments what you thought about this technique. Remember, the comments is the only way that I can get feedback from the videos that you watch. So I really would appreciate your thoughts on this technique. And of course, if this is your first time at the Photoshop training channel, then don't forget to click on that subscribe button. And whether you're a new subscriber or you have been subscribed for a while, click on that notification bell if you haven't already. That way you get notified whenever I post a new tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you again in the next video.